Welcome to Benny and the Boom, the podcast. As you can see, we're at a venue today, our first remote, and that venue happens to be the Pit Barbecue Grill. And we got two very gracious yeah. individuals right here, or I'm gracious for these individuals, rather, oh, me right too, here. Bro. Chimity Chekwa, Brian Bar- Browning. Um, yeah. I-, I came in with these individuals, and we're at their restaurant now, getting ready to record the show, man. How's everything going, fellas? Going. Everything is going good. Going yeah, we're good. good. We're good. You came in with us, but you came in early, so... Always kind of felt like you were like a quarter ahead of us. Bro, bro, yeah. That's yeah. what I was just talking to Boom about a little I, bit ago, man. I was just about to say, he just said that, man. But we all were signed with the 2006 class, and, right. and I was one of those dudes that graduated early. So I kind of felt like I had this disconnect with my class that I came in with because I was hanging with Lawrence, I was hanging with Robo, D. Wash, and all them for the majority of the time when I got in. And, I mean, it was different. It was different because normally yeah. you got that class connection with everybody, and I didn't necessarily have that with all my guys. Yeah, we kind of adopted some of the younger guys like B-Roll and stuff to, right. to replace you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> he big time, y'all, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, he ain't, I ain't going to say he big time with us, but the way stuff was set up at the time, you was in a different dorm. Right, that, yeah. was, that was another huge thing. A lot of times we got to buy you know, a lot of the guys in the class and then uh, Benny was already above with Marketplace at the time. So you already yeah. had a refrigerator, microwave, and oh, all you was living long. Oh, no, no, no. He easy, was, easy, easy, easy. Living easy. It up. He was I started living off it up. In, I started off in Morrison. <laughs> oh, that's I bad, started off man. in Morrison and uh me, Kirk Coleman and Ross Holman was the individuals that came in early. Yeah. And uh we got to we, we was in Morrison and uh Kurt was in Smith. But then that following year when everybody came in, that's when they pit us Above Marketplace. Uh, so okay. our real freshman year, the season, yeah. that's when they switched over to Marketplace. Well, what was sweet about that, though, is by spring quarter, y'all got to move out. Yeah. And me and B we moved got to move in. Yeah. We got to move in. So, you know. Yes, it worked out. I can't right, wait to get that chisel. <laughs> <laughs> you know, man, yeah. uh, you know, I'm excited to have you guys on. Um, obviously, we're going to hit on an array of different things. But, man, let's talk about, man, what we're seeing right now with Ohio State. And, you know, we just had the combine. We just saw these dudes run fast, fast. crazy <laughs> as hell times. D lineman running fast. four threes, crazy, ridiculous. I mean, so what was your assessment on Ohio State football and not only just the season, but what we were able to see with the combine this weekend and watching the the, the wide receivers all come out there and run damn their four threes? Yeah, yeah. I, I would say there's no shortage of talent and athletes coming to Ohio State right now. Um, sometimes. I feel like we struggled to put all that together. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm I'm slightly disappointed in how our defense performed this year overall. Mm. But we'll talk about that. Individuals, mm-hmm. they're they're great athletes. Yeah. There's no question. Yeah. So on my end now, I'm a fat guy. All right. <laughs> we, we, I never ran fast. All right. But looking at those guys now, when I look at the offensive line room, I be thinking like. Yeah, if I was in high school right now, I don't know. Man. That's kind of shit where everybody came through to me, man. Those guys are, are lean, mean, and, you know, ready to destroy something, man. Those guys are all, when I look at them, they all look like they 6'8", with no stomachs. 6'8", <laughs> 250. Right, right. And uh, back when I was there, you know, we had some we had some chubby guys around, yeah, man, some, right some, now. Some big Steve Raring type. Right, thing. right. I just seen they did the workout. They put it on, uh, to, to put a picture on Twitter, man. I was just looking at those guys like. They got abs. Abs and, you know, all, abs and arms, all of them. So, yeah. Like three stars. Does, does Ohio State still recruit three stars outside <laughs> of the state of Ohio? Like, yeah. I was a three star guy yeah, I was from a, Florida. Right. It's like I don't you know could, if I would have made it up here. It's like you coming from outside the state of Ohio. Like you said, it's more so four or five star cats yeah. that they're getting. And, I mean, this transition that we're seeing right now with the way that guys are in shape compared to when we what we were right. looking like coming out of high school, yeah, that shit is night and day. I mean, <laughs> yeah, these dudes right. already look like they've been on college campuses for years. Mm-hmm. And that's not just at Ohio State. That's the landscape of, you know, just high school and, and college football in general. And that right. shit is mind-blowing to me. Like, man, what the hell are you doing in high school? Right, I mean, man. I was right, trying to right, chase some girls. I wanted to work out a little bit. <laughs> right, right, I was right. trying to have a little bit of fun. Like, you're really working on your craft right now. Right? But you were doing straight arms, though. Exactly. No legs, no none of that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> straight up. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That's just like you say. It just the guys are more developed. I think that's kind of where you see kind of the steps of the safety stuff coming in. Like this stuff better come in. Not somebody gonna get their head knocked off. Right. <laughs> plus, clean because these guys are uh, are developed and ready to go. Plus the mindset over. is kind of different. You got huddle now, which is, you, right. you can upload all your all your videos and stuff. I feel yeah. like I remember when I was coming out. I got a, a highlight video made of me from Sunshine Preps my junior year. You know that's like late in the process. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now I'm huddle guys got 
videos their freshman year, the sophomore year, so they're already getting ready for the process. Well, you know what? It's even earlier than that now. I mean, I, I got a little nephew who just played in a freaking all-star game in Vegas. Wow. And he's, uh, I think, fourth grade. <laughs> <laughs> fourth grade, bro. So, and then he had a guy that was from, from PA, um, a little offensive lineman guy. Dude, dude, like six foot, like almost 200 pounds. I'm like, man, what the heck is going on? Like, and when did they start having right. uh, – all star games for for kids at that age across man. the country, across the country, across the country, across the country. Yeah, that's that's, that's crazy. The East yeah. against West. What? <laughs> <laughs> what are y'all talking about? Fourth how do y'all grade. rank these guys? Right. You know what I, I'm I, I don't understand how they rank them. No, that, that's wild. Um, what, what you guys take on Ohio State right now? We're, we're in a situation to where we're making the transition with the coaching staff. Uh, we all know Urban Meyer. I mean. The dude was phenomenal. I mean, he's going to be labeled as one of the greatest coaches to coach in college football right, history. Right. Uh, won a national championship, won a, a shit ton of games. At times, he probably <coughs> outthought himself. That got him out of the uh, winning a couple of more games and potentially going to another national championship or two. Um, but what's your state of the program? Right? Or what's your thought on the state of the program? I think we're spoiled because we have <laughs> <laughs> Tressel to Meyer. So, I mean, expectations are high. And – the reality is Ryan Day is going to have to deliver on right. those expe- yeah. expectations. That's just what it. That's just what it is now. But um, I think we're in a good place. I honestly think the type of talent they got, they have bringing in, they're bringing in here. As long as the coaches are doing what they need to do in developing talent, I think I think we're in a good place. Yeah, I feel the same. Um, I think uh, what they try to do, I think was a smart thing to try to do, is just kind of not shake up everything with Urban coming out the door. Get a guy that's on the staff. Get a guy that know the players. Hey, come right on in. You know, they had the videos, the transition type of deal, and just plan on keeping the program just kind of running smooth as it is. And um, I think that's a smart thing to do because, like you said, we're getting uh, – the talent is there. You know, the talent is there. I feel like since since Trestle uh, – well, for my eyes, since Trestle been in range, it's every year it's national championship or bust. Right. Mm-hmm. As in with these guys, it's like – we better be at the national championship because you just you know you see the guys you see the first round talents all over the field and uh, with those guys coming in uh, and keep repeating that just keep going keep going I feel like they are in a great position to keep repeating and the, the quarterbacks man we're bringing in a lot of good quarterbacks I remember <laughs> when we were there we got TP and then after TP it just seemed like nobody wanted to come to Ohio State right, until right. Braxton so yeah. um, I think they're doing a good job recruiting quarterbacks yeah. yeah speaking of coaches you said something about the coaches I mean. We got some guys from the other side, you know, from, from, from the other side, you know, defensive coordinator and a linebacker coach. Just give me your guys' thoughts on that, you know, how you feel about that. Like, what do you think about it? Like, Once you know. OSU starts paying them, they OSU coaches. So as, long as, they, <laughs> right. as long as they deliver. Yeah. And, I, and I honestly think we needed a shake-up on the defensive side. So um, I haven't – I don't know their background. So as long as, you know, they're, they're good, solid coaches and they can develop talent, it doesn't matter to me where they come from. They right. just need to make sure we beat that team up north. Right, right, right. That's right, always right, the goal, right? right? Yeah, as long as the plan is to beat the team up north, I'm okay with it. Right. Uh, right now, it's almost uh, – it kind of got to a point right now, like you don't want to be on the team that lose to Michigan. Nah. Like, that's <laughs> like kind of – it's crazy to say. Like, <laughs> you lost the move. Like, you, we don't do that no more. <laughs> so, as long as they kind of come in, they Man. understand that, and they work the team to uh, – to kind of get that, get to that level, that they make sure that they win these type of games, they beat that. We we we, we dominate against the rival. Hey, they fit right on in with me. Who was, the, who was the last team that lost to Michigan? Was that twenty eleven? Was that twenty eleven? Come, yeah, come, come, come on, man! Come on, man! Come on, man! Come on! You weren't part of that either, was you? No, 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 never, never. Why you gotta do all that, man? Oh, hey, I was trying to let that just slide under the rug. You know what I'm saying? What was the last time? What was the last time? You gonna look at your face? What was the last time? Come on, bro. You gotta bring that one out, man. Hey, that was a rough year, man. Yeah, it was a rough year. That's like the Michael Jordan years when he played for the Wizards. Right. He just gonna destroy the tape. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, erase that. <laughs> with, with you two guys, I mean, your time playing at Ohio State, I, I can't imagine you probably lost more than you know two games in a season. Right? Uh, I, we we might have had one three games. We we lost three games because while we were there, wow. I don't think I lost two. I don't yeah, the know, year after you games. left, we lost uh, we lost right. the SC. We lost to Penn State and we lost to Texas in the Fiesta Bowl. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And we count the bowl game. Yeah, we count the bowl game. Talking about regular yeah. season. Yeah, regular season. Yeah, no, never. No, never. No, no not more than two. Man, if we if we'd have lost three games in the regular season, I would have felt like yeah, that was a bad year. Yeah, I would like that <laughs> was a bad year. And, and 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 to be honest, we really only legit lost. I mean, we lost all three of them, but 
if you go back and look, we should have won the Texas game. Yeah, oh, we should have won Texas. We should have beat Penn State. We should have beat Penn State. Black for that. Only game I say, only game I say we really lost was the USC game. We got yeah, we got the trash. Trash. Yeah. I remember going back to the Penn State game in 2007. So I did lose three games in a year. I didn't play in a USC game. That's why that won't kind of slip my memory. But I remember it's four for one, and I remember being in the huddle. I'm telling TP, just go straight ahead. Just go. Straight, you, you get it. You big. You 250 pounds. Just go straight ahead. This motherfucker takes the ball. And I don't know what he thought he was Superman at the time or what, but he took the ball and took it around the edge. Yeah. Like, what the fuck is you doing? Yeah, yeah. yeah I never. Yeah, that one yeah. hurt. But, but, hey, that QB sneak. We destroyed that. I, I, I was gonna, I'm gonna tackle that position. That that for that play because mm-hmm. that guy gave us some sacks. I'm, I'm, I'm bad. Right. <laughs> Shit, we, I, we fire off on him. We destroy the line. And all I hear is a, you know, you know, you you can't see oh, anything on him, but yeah. you just kind of hear a, like, what's this delay? Like, it should just be a first down, uh-huh. you know, type of deal. And you just hear the crowd go silent. When you look back, the ball bouncing. I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah, what, like, what the, like, what happened? And yeah, then, sure hey. enough, that, that was it. So, so then the following week, right, you know, we in practice. You know how we do our practice. We're doing down the distance. And we come up to, we, we, we re doing a fourth down play. <laughs> I'm like, TP, man, next time, man, don't do that shit, man. Just run straight ahead. And he gets so mad, yeah, so that. pissed off. I remember that. And he's crying and carrying yeah, on. Yeah, I remember and that. I think he was yeah. leaving practice, right? <laughs> and so <laughs> this is my last show. I'm like, motherfucker, I don't give a fuck. What's going on? You do it. So after this, after practice, Coach Tress called me into his office. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, man. That was Tress baby, too, now. Yeah, yeah, T- yeah, for tough. people that don't know, TP was Tress's son when we Matt, was that was his baby, bro. Yeah, yeah. So he, he calls me into his office. He was like, Beanie, you're supposed to be a leader on this football team. And I'm like, oh, yeah, man, I understand that. And he's like, uh, and you're supposed to show guys how to do things the right way. And I'm respecting all that. Yeah. But then this is where he gets me. Mind you, I didn't practice a lot that year. Yeah, so, yeah, so you, he had the, you had the foot. So yeah. he was like, uh-huh. I don't know how you're going to say something to somebody about doing something wrong when you don't even practice. Ooh. And I'm like, oh, my God. That was the blow. Stuff him out. That's when I realized, like, oh, shit. I am not the guy that I thought I was. About here. <laughs> but that was a crazy situation yeah, right there, man. Yeah. I didn't know Tress fired off on you. Oh, like bro, that. Yeah, I didn't know. Yeah. You, you would never know, man. Tress yeah, yeah. was one of those people. And it wasn't like he was saying it to where it was like extremely disrespectful. It was in the most calm, mm-hmm. respectful yeah. manner. But like, it made but you, you feel felt like, it. damn. Yeah, you like, felt keep it. this in mind now. Uh-huh. You, know you, you know how you get cussed out without being, get, without oh, yeah. somebody cussing? Uh-huh. That's how I felt. Like, yeah. damn. You just yeah. really just dogged me like that without even dogging me. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah. Made me look at myself in the mirror completely different. <laughs> that was, was TP's freshman year, right? Freshman yeah. year. Yep. Yeah. Uh-huh. So he had to handle him with kids, kids gloves that, that yeah. year. Yeah, that was, a, that was an interesting year just in general. Because just remember, if you just remember the transition from quarterback, you had mm-hmm. Ty Beckman who was oh. essentially up, almost up for the highs from the year before. He was, up. He was yeah. And then the next year – uh, essentially, more or less, they kind of decided to sit who, him down. Who side was y'all on? Y'all want uh, Man, I Beck or who, TP? Whoever could hand the ball off better than me. Huh? <laughs> 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 no, for me, man, I, I wanted Todd Beckman to be the guy. Yeah, I mean, yeah. no disrespect to TP. He was a phenomenal athlete. Yeah. We all know it. Yeah, and can see that, but he had. Yeah, he was great. Yeah. In terms of opening up the offense, mm-hmm. Todd Beckman yeah. did that best for us, I believe. Yeah. Um, after the USC game, it was almost like, damn, Tress felt like he probably had to make a decision because yeah. Todd didn't play that well. Mm-hmm. But Todd didn't have all his pieces on the offensive end, mm-hmm. which we couldn't run a lot of play action. Uh, and, and I know Hartline and I know Robisia, they felt I know they, they wanted Todd yeah. for sure. Yeah. More than anybody uh, with TP taking the reins at the quarterback spot. I, but going into that year, too, Todd Beckman on uh, Todd, not McS- Todd McShay. What's the other cat's name? Mel Kuyper. Mel Kuyper, uh-huh. yeah. Mel Kuyper's board, Todd Beckman was slated to be a first-round draft pick going into that year. And I'm mm. like, God damn, he has to hate yeah. everything yeah, about I, the 2007. Right. Yeah. I, I know from year. like a young uh, de- defensive pr- perspective, like me, Jamel Hines and stuff, the reason we kind of wanted TP was because we felt like defensively we were better than everybody else. Mm-hmm. So as long as we didn't mess up on offense, like as long as we didn't do nothing crazy like a pick six or something crazy like that, we felt like we were going to win. And honestly – we felt like if TP threw a pick, he was gonna go make the tackle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. TP yeah. gonna make the tackle. We gonna we gonna get this three now. We gonna be back on the offense. So right. I, I think that's how we kind of felt. But hell no, yeah. TP wasn't about to tackle nobody. Right. Right. <laughs> but see, that was my first year playing too, though, starting on the offensive line. And on my end, my perspective behind it was, 
I better make these damn blocks. Like, right. I, it don't even much matter <laughs> who, at quarter, who at quarterback, if I'm missing blocks, ain't none of this stuff going to work anyway. Mm-hmm. So my mindset behind it was just like, hey, play. Just, you, keep, you know, go out here and, and make the damn, whatever play call, try to execute it. Whoever taking the snap, wherever else happens, happens. You know, your, your part is to block the damn DN out of the tackle. <laughs> my, my part is blocking the DN. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that to the best of ability. Anything else, you know, it, it'll work itself out. And obviously, we was winning. We was winning. Yeah. So I know, I remember that's it. We had a lot of offense woes, though. I mean, some games, I think I remember the defensive coaches on the sideline yelling, like, hey, we got to score points, yeah. defense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could we see it on off. Right. Like, we would see, like, I think it was Penn State game. Like, we would see somebody be open across the middle. Like for a touchdown, and we'll be like, "And why he ain't throw the ball?" We're like, "Dang, man, this game is close for no reason." Like, <laughs> we feel like we should have really beat Penn State that year. Oh like, yeah, we should definitely. Like, a couple beat. touchdowns. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, but I don't know. It, it is what it is. Go, going back and looking at both of you guys this time, Chip, I'm gonna start with you. Um, you know, making the decision to come to Ohio State. Obviously, being a kid from Florida that grew up in New Orleans, then moving to Florida. Yeah. Um, you know, was was that difficult for you to say? You know what, man, I'm gonna take my ass from Florida, sunshine, <laughs> every day. Palm I'm trees. To, right, right, right. I'm gonna go to Ohio <laughs> State. How difficult was that? That transition, not only from Florida to Ohio State, but the process of making that decision to come to Ohio State. Yeah, I think initially my my focus was going to a team somewhere in the southeast. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily in Florida, because I grew up in Louisiana. I was actually an LSU fan growing up. So did they offer you? LSU did not offer me. Ooh. So now I was like, dang, <laughs> yeah. I got to figure something out. Um, so after that, you know, I was thinking I was going to go somewhere in the southeast. Um, Ohio State um, started to recruit me, and I didn't take it serious because, first of all, I didn't know nothing about Ohio. I knew a little bit about Ohio State because of football, mm-hmm. but I thought Ohio was just like a big state of corn crops. Man. I'm like, <laughs> I mean, I'm a cornfield. There ain't no cities out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that's where everybody thinks that ain't from here. Yeah. And, and but then after visiting, man, I'm like, cause I, I I visited Maryland first, which was weird. I visited Maryland and then I flew straight from Maryland to Ohio State, so it was mm-hmm. like an instant comparison. And I'm like, man, Night Ohio day. State is way better. <laughs> like this is crazy. Like, I'm not going. To, I told my dad on my visit, and it was a terrible visit because it was no like. We didn't really do much. Right. But no just nightlife. just seeing the facilities and yeah. talking to the coaches and stuff, I called my dad like, I'm coming to Ohio State. I'm trying to go to the league. Right. <laughs> right. I'm coming to Ohio State, man. No question. Who recruited you? Uh, Daryl Hazel. Uh. So Coach Hazel came down and recruited me. We had a – that year – we had a receiver that was really, really good. Like, he was top 10 in the nation. Mm-hmm. So, I think uh, initially Ohio State was recruiting him. Mm-hmm. And then um, Coach Hazel saw me playing and stuff, and they were like, we need a corner. Mm-hmm. That guy could play. So, Dude, I, I can't – I love Coach Hazel to death. One of the, the best coaches that we've had uh, during my time at Ohio State. But I couldn't imagine a boring – a more boring <laughs> guy to recruit me. <laughs> well, I mean, you How is he hyping you up to recruit you to get you to come to Ohio State? That's right. what's crazy because they got me regardless of – because my, my visit was boring. First right. of all, I visited in the winter. School was out. It was oh snowing. I had never seen snow, first of all. <laughs> got off. Wow. There was a whole bunch of snow. I'm like, oh, I wanted to see snow, but I didn't want to see this much. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, crazy. Yeah. Then uh, Robo was my was one of my hosts. Oh, oh my god. god, y'all didn't do shit. <laughs> Robo, was, <laughs> Robo was a terrible host, man. Oh, oh, Robo, it, was, it was it was Robo and uh, and Gonzo. Oh, oh my god, god. <laughs> we went to go see you King Kong. With Coach Hazel, though. Coach Hazel was there, too. The, like, y'all went to the movies? Went to the movies. Go see King Kong, bro. I fell asleep at the theater, man. Bro, shout out to Gonzo, who's the congressman now. Yeah. yeah. Shout, shout out to him. Shout out to Gonzo. But <laughs> God damn. So, yeah, yeah needless to say, my visit was terrible. I didn't have fun. I'm like, look, I'm probably I'm going to talk to my dad. I'm probably not going to have fun at all. That's not going to be part of it. It's all about football. It's all about business up here, man. They don't have fun up here. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, but yeah. B, what would your, uh, your your situation was a little bit different? Obviously, yeah. you coming from Glenville. Right. Did you have a choice? Uh, uh <laughs> to be honest, no, kind of sort of. But it was a good time not to have a choice. So right. for me, uh, I was another three star recruit. I wasn't uh a, a, a huge recruit like Ohio as far as the big schools, so like the Ohio State, the Michigans, you know, the big. Schools they weren't really recruit. I had a lot of Big Ten offers, a lot of MAC offers, things of that sort. Mm-hmm. Uh, but coming out with me, I know you, obviously y'all guys know y'all know Ray uh, Ray Small, Rob mm-hmm. Rose. Now those guys was the five star, four star recruits. Everybody wanted those guys. Right. Um, and uh, so I guess my high school in general, you know, we got a lot of attention anyway. Coach, uh, my high school coach, Coach Gian Tressel, they like literally like best friends. They mm-hmm. talk all the time. So I, more or less, I, in my head, I was say, I figured like Gian convinced him like, hey, y'all need to go ahead and take right. take my guy, <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and and that's what they did. So once that offer came in, it was 
obviously by far the best school that I had offered me. For me, it was a no brainer. I had no people there. My my high school coach got a connection with the head coach. You know, those guys are good friends. They giving me an opportunity. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna go there. Uh, my offer actually didn't come in to senior year. I was playing like mm-hmm. it was like during the middle of the year, and then coming the ladder, Gann just told me one day like, "You got to offer the Ohio State," <laughs> 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 and then that was just it. that was just it from there. I still kind of went through the recruiting process, you know, visit some schools and things of that sort, but. You know, from that time on, it's like, yeah, if I if I get a chance to be a Buckeye, I'm gonna be a Buckeye. So with B, man, it was a little bit different um, from my perspective, looking at looking on the outside, looking in, because B wasn't one of those guys that you know you had to worry about in terms of grades. Oh, he was taught as a genius dude coming. Yeah. We got this motherfucking genius IQ dude coming to Ohio State to play on the offensive line. Yeah. So I thought going through the recruiting process, like, man, there's no way this dude coming. He was going to somewhere like Harvard or some shit like right. that. I mean, he's too smart to be coming to Ohio State. Too smart to be going to Glenville, probably. <laughs> <laughs> no, no disrespect to Glenville. <laughs> but it was just a little bit different perspective from me looking out, uh, looking on yeah. the outside, looking in at your situation. You're right, right. But in my eyes, I mean, you grow up, you watch in Ohio State, you know, 2000. 2002, they won the national championship. I think that's my that's my freshman year of high school. I want to, yeah, freshman year of high school, and uh, you know you just see basically at the time it was kind of more or less like our top guys in the pro- program was going to Ohio State. That's how it kind of was flowing throughout those years, and I was just like, I'm honored enough to be one of the top guys in my program. What better school to play for than my state school, Ohio State? You're gonna yeah. you're gonna compete every year. You're gonna get a chance to win. Hell, if you do good enough, you can actually go to the NFL. You know, you know, you got that type of program. You got those type of guys around. Uh, so when that opportunity came, I was just like, you know, like I said, I, I listened to some other schools, see what they had to offer. But, like, you know, it was almost you – know, I ain't going to call it a second home, but it was just like, you know, this is where my heart was at, right. you know, to kind of get here. So, yeah. So I said, when I was working, you know, in the offseason, that was – that was kind of my plan. I would love to get this scholarship offer from Ohio State. And then it, it actually came. So, you know, so, so let that go. <laughs> I'm looking, looking back for both of you guys, if you guys could make any decision different at the high school spot, when you're in high school and, and you're picking colleges, would you do anything differently? Would you think you would, you know, make the same decision that you made? Uh, I would still go to Ohio State, that's for sure. Um, I would take all my visits. I didn't take all of all my official visits. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Once I decided to go to Ohio State, my dad was like, yeah, you shouldn't lead any of the other schools on. Just go ahead and uh, commit. But I would not do that next time. <laughs> yeah. I had a visit set up at, at, that, at that time. I think um, like Wake Forest and Duke were really good. <laughs> Duke's always really good. Wake Forest was really good at basketball. And I had a, a visit to Wake Forest to go to the game. To a hoop game. <laughs> and I really, I, I didn't really want to go to Wake Forest, but I really wanted to go to, go to the, the right game. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to take that visit next time. Yeah. Uh, well, well, did you commit? Uh, Huh? When did you commit? I committed. Uh, was it like a junior year or? No, nah, it was my senior year. Okay. So I was I was kind of a later recruit. For okay. real. I All didn't right. really play varsity till my junior year. Uh, my school was a brand new school um, that opened my freshman year, so nobody really knew about us. Uh-huh. I used to I used to um, a lot of Glenville dudes. I used to say if I went to Glenville, I'd be the number one corner in the nation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just hype alone. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. Nobody knew about it, so as it. That, that, that my one of my friends who was getting highly recruited. That's how all the school started knowing. That's how right. I started getting recruited for yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, really want to do too much different. One thing I would say different I would do is I had a visit set up to uh, Illinois, mm-hmm. and I didn't take that visit. And I don't know if y'all probably remember this or not, but at the time, Ron Zook, Ron Zook. was the head was the head coach of he Illinois. He was a hell of a recruiter too. And he was getting all these fives. He was getting all these big recruits, and I wanted mm-hmm. to know what the hell was happening on that <laughs> visit <laughs> <laughs> to get all these guys to commit to Illinois. Because at the time, they still was mediocre at best, right, but yeah. they're getting all these recruits. So I just wanted to know, like, what the hell is happening at Illinois on these visits? <laughs> mm-hmm. and all these guys are, are, are going there. Some money up there. Yeah, yeah. Something, something going on. <laughs> if I'm a recruit, going on. if I'm a recruit right now in this day and age. And I got Ohio State, and I got Alabama, and I got Clemson, all offers from those places. The first thing I'm going to look at is, I know y'all see it on Twitter, uh, Mark Pantone posts those things mm. to where it shows at what position, how many guys they got in the league, yeah. and how many guys they had drafted. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Ohio State is leading the pack in a bunch of that shit. Right, right. So I don't yeah. think it's any question yeah. right now if I'm a recruit, if I'm going to Ohio State. <laughs> I'm going to Ohio State. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I see I'm going to the league. Yeah. At least I'm getting a shot. Yeah. Yeah, just, just to get to that – the be number one on Ohio State means a lot. I remember, mm-hmm. I know when we all was playing, we used to have a bunch of guys that used to be in the league and come back and talk to us and say, like, y'all probably not going to believe this or not, but it's playing at Ohio State, is it's, it's tougher to play here than it is for some of these, a lot of these NFL teams. Mm-hmm. They used yeah. to come back and say that all the time. You'd be like, 
what? Like, what are you talking about? These guys ain't in the NFL already. Like, it don't really make sense. And then once you get there, you kind of see what he's talking about. Right. Like you see some of the guys that kind of come in um, who maybe wasn't that, you know, they was kind of touted because they, they, whatever's that, they was the number one guy. Mm-hmm. But, you know, coming to Ohio State, you might have been the number two, number three guy. You know, you guys got to share You got to share carries here. You're not getting all the carries. Right. You know, just mm-hmm. at the same. Speaking about that. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it kind of made sense once you kind of got to that level because, you know, like a lot of guys at Ohio State that was very capable mm-hmm. of playing probably anywhere in the country get stuck behind the wrong guy and, you know, and, and that, essentially that's your, that's your college and career. And that was my thing. <laughs> when I got to Ohio State, I knew like if I could start at the corner position, I had a chance to go to the league. So all my focus was I need to get to a point where I'm playing. You know what I'm uh-huh. saying? And I, and I came the year before me, Malcolm uh, D. Walsh came the year before that, Brandon Underwood. So there was a lot of guys when I got there, I'm like, if I do the math. If all these guys are a year ahead of me or maybe mm-hmm. two years, I may not get on the field until my senior year. So – once I got on the field, you know, I was like, all right, I got a, I got a real shot now. Because right. just me playing at Ohio State was good enough to give me the resume to, you know, make it to the league. Yeah. Now, you both talk about, you know, getting to the NFL. Both of you had the chance to actually play at that next level. Um, just just speak on that a little bit. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, you got drafted. B, you went undrafted, but mm-hmm. you had the opportunity to do it. And we could talk about that, too, because that's, that's, that, that's a hard thing yeah, to do for yeah, it, go undrafted to – just, just speak on that. Yeah, I, I mean, it was definitely a blessing to get drafted, um, and it was a great experience. I think I went into the league with a lot of like injuries coming mm-hmm. from college that weren't like fully rehabbed and stuff. So that kind of, that kind of, kind of hurt my my professional career a little bit. But overall, man, it's a great experience, man. Um, the NFL is different than college because college you got you with the same guys all the time mm-hmm. and obviously in the NFL those guys are in and out in and out of the building you got a guy you make a best friend here one day the next day man what <laughs> go <Gone. laughs> right? Tuesdays and Tuesdays just be rough. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Dang, they got him coming working out. Man, I kid you not. About midway through the season, no, yeah, my rookie year, um, Al Davis passed away. Uh-huh. Al Davis was like head coach, owner, GM, yeah. defensive coordinator. Like that, he did all of those things. When he passed, Hugh Jackson was our head coach. After he passed away, Hugh, Hugh kind of took over everything, like the 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 free agent decisions, all that. So once he passed, it was like he just changed to like – he pretty much told us like, I'm going to look on the waiver wire every week and I'm working guys every week to take positions. <laughs> and that's y'all how I did it, huh? Now, I, I didn't do it. I, I, when he drafted you, mm-hmm. you were his guy. Like right. you had for, to, for Al to get rid of you, you had to do some crazy stuff for real. Like you just had to be bad for like three years straight. Right. Like you can be bad for one year. You were like, all right, I'm gonna pay you if you're good next year. You know what I'm oh saying? wow. But once once uh he passed away, he just started it was crazy. Like we would have guys, they'll sign a guy one day, next week, we oh. the, we in the meeting, he gets tapped on the shoulder. We call it do the Grim Reaper. He tapped him on the shoulder during the during the season. Uh-huh. He's gone. I'm like, man, this is crazy, man. Like yeah. it was wild. Like the team kind of just sh- changed. But that's what the league was. For now, real. now was it was a tough going through that process and because I think before your injuries you were supposed to be like a second round pick somewhere yeah. there yeah. so it was it tough to, to go through that and then to say damn I, I get hurt and then I have to have surgery and I can't perform to the maximum of my capability at the yeah. combine because of that it was it was tough when I got hurt initially I got hurt my last game because um, I wasn't sure if I was going to still be able to play. Right. Once I found out I was going to play, I the, didn't know it was that bad. The way we think for real is, I'm, I'm just, I was just so confident. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Once I realized I could play, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? Like I'm going to be the best corner. I'm going to be a Hall of Famer. Like, it, it, <laughs> so it wasn't tough at the time, but when you go back and look at it, all that stuff was was difficult. And I, you know, I had the surgery. Um, I did a little bit of training for the combine. I had to get another surgery, and then I went to the combine. I still ran well. Mm-hmm. Um, had a little cast on my hand. But um, yeah, overall it was it was tough. But at the time, because I'm, you know, at the time you're just so confident, you think you could do right. whatever. You just kind of roll roll with it. Really. Yeah, yeah. So like Boone was saying, the experience for me was totally different. Mm-hmm. So when me and Chim came out, uh, it's the lockout year. Mm. I didn't even think about that. Damn, lockout what? year. So if you didn't get drafted, there's no free. There's nothing going on. So they had to they had to come on. They had to draft after the draft. No communications for teams. So me, I didn't get drafted. So after the after the draft is over, and you just 
Just crickets. Right. <laughs> I, talked, I, talked, I talked to my agent. He was like, "You'll be fine. Like, you know, once you know, once the lockout end, you know, we'll, we'll, you know, you'll find the team. You'll be, you'll be fine." So I just, you know, we all here in Columbus because no one left after the uh, after the uh, draft. So we mm-hmm. all here. We just at the wood. We working out. We mm-hmm. get home. We playing FIFA every day. No, no scholarship <laughs> check. No scholarship <laughs> check. We all just we all was together though. It was kind of yeah. pretty cool. We all got really close. We, we start playing FIFA actually. <laughs> we all get up in the morning, work out, then we all come home. A lot of people was at our house, and we was just you know kind of just uh, you know chilling, relaxing from there. So on that side of things, like so, literally no phone calls. And so then the day that the um, that they said the end of the lockout, phone blown off the hook. Right. Like teams calling me. You should come here as a free agent because X Y Z. You should come here as a free agent because X Y Z. You should come here as a free agent. I think about eight teams called me. They gave you some money. Let me we get there. <laughs> so um, so I'm talking to my agent. So my phone blowing up, and you know, you know, you get drafted. Obviously, you, this team said you're going near now as a free agent. You got to make this decision, right? And everybody wants a decision made in one night. Like one, you, you, one you day, got, you got a couple hours to make this decision. Like all right, think about it. We'll call you back and call me back. And and, and literally about eight teams had called me. And I know when it kind of really kind of got down to the nitty gritty, nitty gritty of it, um, Hugh had called me mm-hmm. with Oakland. He was like, "Look, I really want you to come here." And the way they had did, the way they had came out the lockout deals, like basically every team only had like a really small amount of money to spend towards free agents. Mm-hmm. Usually before that, a guy would be a free agent and maybe sign a signing bonus for forty, fifty grand. Right. At this time, they may have forty, fifty grand to sign all of them. So people mm-hmm. are like literally giving you little chunks of money like i give you two grand come i give you three grand to come uh the team that put up the most money was st louis rams they mm-hmm. said we'll give you five we'll give you five oakland speaking with you that's on the head coach i'm talking to he like i really want you to come but we can't give you no money oh zero <laughs> he, he was calling me too because he, he knew we were roommates because yeah. like, we sit by each other he packing to get ready to go to oakland <laughs> i'm sitting there taking phone calls trying to figure out what team I'm going to go to. <laughs> it, was, it was a crazy night, the craziest night of all nights. So he packed and get ready to go to Oakland. I'm on the phone with people. I remember at the time, uh, we're both our wives now, but his, at the time, his girlfriend, my girlfriend, we all at the house, we all just trying to figure this out. We Like I said, I literally got hours to figure this out. And so it was just like, I'm talking to the agent, like, well, well, I guess if this team giving you the most money, I guess it makes the most sense to go with this team. Right, it was like it, 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 I guess that would prove that they want you the most because they're willing to put up the most amount of money for you. Mm-hmm. And like I said, we're not talking about a whole lot of money. Right. We're just talking yeah. about a couple grand. Like literally, I think the Chargers was like, "We'll give you two. The Panthers was like, "We'll give you three. They said it five. Oakland's calling me. They really want me, but they said we got zero dollars. Right, right. <laughs> you, this is zero. We, we, it'd be good. You'd be good once you get here. We got zero dollars for you. And they were calling me not to talk to me though. Like I'm trying to figure out what what you know what I'm saying right. what am I what am I supposed to fly into? They're like, hey, what's up with your boy? Like, hey, what you talking about? What's up with your boy, Brian? Brian, what's up with your boy? And, like, I, <laughs> and I just remember, and then, you know, I don't know none of these people. And I kind of knew Hugh because I had took a visit out there. But other than that, I know none of these guys. And they all called me telling me we really want you to come. Mm-hmm. Like you really need to come to my team. So like, push go to shower. Like all right, we're gonna take the most money. We went to St. Louis. I was in St. Louis for 10 days before they came. <laughs> 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 oh, man. This kinda... So you don't talk to him no more? <laughs> no, nah, oh, I mean, he was BTI bro. Sports. I uh, know BTI Sports' name is Joe. Uh, <laughs> See, you know, he was a good guy, man. Got, no, but he made the dumbest uh, decision. Yeah. He talking about... We're talking about $5,000. He's supposed to be looking at the best opportunity. Yeah, for him. wait. <laughs> but I take that back. He was bringing that. I kind of forgot okay, that. He was right. bringing that up, too. It's like teams had drafted guys. Oakland had drafted two off of the line. Two guys. Man. Yeah. St. Louis drafted none that year. Okay, too. okay, okay. They drafted right, none. Sense. So uh, uh, it was at the time, like, they offered you the most money. They didn't draft no offensive linemen. So that was, that also gotcha, was a consideration gotcha. that we was kind of making on, on that, on, on picking the team. I forgot about that. But we went to St. Louis uh, there for 10 days. So obviously you went there. It was one day you started camp. Mm-hmm. You right in the damn camp. Like, it was, it was, you know, you got no time to learn nothing about moving to this city, anything like that. We moved, go straight to camp. That night, we moved out of our apartment that night. We had a full <laughs> two-bedroom apartment. apartment at Olin Teji Commons. So, you know, a duplex and right. stuff. We throwing stuff in the dumpster, whole yeah. couches, <laughs> everything. Right, was, I took one suitcase. That's all the clothes I, I threw in. I had the Martin couch. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we had the green couch. We still had the green couch. Green couch in the dumpster sitting. I helped move that to y'all place. Yeah, That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, <laughs> Robo. Yeah, your <laughs> Robo came. Drop that joint off. I would say it was a good decision not to come to Oakland because Al Davis really, really, really liked his draft picks. 
It didn't matter who he draft. If he made a bad decision, it didn't matter. He still liked you. So he wasn't cutting none of them guys. But it's the free agent guys, you wasn't going to make the team. Like, they, they're not making the team. It didn't matter. Like, we had a corner, uh, Sterling Moore. I know he, Sterling. He yeah. balled. Yeah. He balled that year, man. And yeah. I was, I came in kind of, um, I got hurt the, like the first day of camp. So he was balling. He was balling. But Al Davis was not putting him on that roster, bro. <laughs> Wow. I now put him on the roster. That's the league for you, though, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah ten days and you ten cut. Ten days cut. So I get cut. Like I said, I got one suitcase for all my stuff. Okay, anything else, I just threw it all away. I go to you Cleveland. You your clothes away, B? It was like, you know, you took the stuff I wanted, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was trying to look, you know, look decent. Right. Right? I had some decent stuff in the suitcase. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't let a lot of it go, though. It was like, it was, it was, it was over yeah. with. And uh, I go to Cleveland. So they come tap me on the show, basically tap on the show. I'm in the locker room. We get changed for They got to get meetings. This random guy coming in, like, hey, uh, Browning, bring your playbook. I need to see you. I'm like, what? What's going on? What's going on? <laughs> so I go upstairs. And I remember at the same time, you know, like you say, the confidence, especially as a rookie coming in, I'm like, all right, I ain't get drafted, but I know I could play. Right. Like, yeah. I'm looking at the guys that's practicing in front of me, some of the guys that was been in the league for, you know, a handful of years. I'm like, okay, they know the playbook better than me now. So right. so, so be it. But once I know the playbook, I'm better than these guys. Right. I, there's no <laughs> doubt in my mind. I'm better than these guys. And I'm the one getting cut. I'm the first, I'm the first person cut. And then it's other free agents. It was like they had signed like maybe five free agents on line. I'm the only one cut. I'm like, wow, man, this is this is kind of this is in Cleveland. We're talking about no, this is uh, St. Louis. Oh, St. Louis, okay. Uh, so I'm you know I pack my stuff. I go home, move to Cleveland. I, I go fishing because I still don't know the process. You know, my agent just like they cut you. Like this is kind of you know whatever. They put you on waivers. We we'll see what's happening. So I go to Cleveland. I think my enemy. I think it's over. With. <laughs> <laughs> he said he went cut. fishing. <laughs> I, 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 I went to Cleveland. I went fishing with my uncle and my uh, grandfather. We get to they they fish a lot. They got a boat. They we in the lake. We get in the lake. Go out there. I get a call. I'm like, you know, hello. Who, who is this? It's the uh, parents calling me. Hey, yeah, we just picked you up off of waivers. Uh, they they had the first pick in the waivers actually because they had. Got Cam Newton that year, so you know, go kind of draft order. Yeah. But yeah, we picked you up. We about to book your flight right now. I'm like, man, what, man? So we <laughs> out there, we <laughs> drove like an hour. I'm like, man, y'all got to give me some time to get to the airport, man. Right. I, 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 like, I don't know how none of this works. So we in the fishing trip right then. We just got in the water, lead the boat, pull the boat back out, get to Cleveland, so I can get on the airport, go to the Panthers. I stayed there for like a year, year and a half. So, but it was. It was just like my, just you know, you just you no know, one kind of go over that kind of yeah, stuff, right? Man, you know, especially you that just, lockout, man. Yeah. That lockout was so crazy. The lockout was just so crazy. There was no evaluation period for us. Like we didn't have no off season. We mm -hmm. didn't have no OTAs, no rookie mini camp. Right, right. They just called you, showed up the next day, and then the season was about to start. Right. <laughs> and then you got this play, you know, the playbook. <laughs> right. You don't got no time to learn yeah. it. You out there just like, man, forget the playbook. I'm just gonna ball. Like, right. <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna ball Instinct. and see what happens. And. Fortunately for the Panthers, I was able to make like practice squad, and uh, actually I got active, made was on the roster. Then I hurt my wrist, hurt my wrist, had to get surgery, was out for the year. But uh, it was just, man, you talking about just time, just this stuff, just a crazy time in your Four life, away. right there, man. Just yeah, that was that was a crazy time, right there. Jim, I, I want to talk a little bit more about Al Davis, man. You said you got a chance to to play with him, and the year he drafted you, he passed later on that year. Yeah. Uh, but when we were talking before we started the podcast, man, you said Al Davis was essentially the head coach. <laughs> How in the hell does that work? Because I mean, obviously, if if a, a coach is the head coach, he's controlling yeah. everything. Yeah. Um. So, do you feel like you were able to really learn from your position coaches and your head coach with Al Davis being over and you essentially being a head coach, like you said? Yeah. Without disrespecting my position coaches, they didn't coach. They didn't teach me nothing my rookie year. <laughs> nothing. Um. And Al Davis. When when I got there, he was he was uh, like sick, so mm -hmm. he didn't come around as often as he I guess he did the years before. But his fingerprints were on everything. Like I remember uh, getting ready for to play the Saints. It was our third preseason game. I just got healthy from my little injury that I had, and the coach like pulled me to the side. Position coach was like, "Yo, you you gonna play safety this week?" This is like two days before the game. Right. I've been learning corner this entire time. <laughs> I never took reps at safety. He's like, "Yeah, um, you are gonna play safety this week?" And I looked at him I'm like. Why would you want me to play safety? You know what I'm saying? Like, right. not not disrespectfully, but why would you want me to play safety? You've had me at corner the whole time. It's like, the, the, the man upstairs said you playing safety. <laughs> I'm thinking in my head, like, God, like, Jesus. <laughs> 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 Jesus, what he was talking about, Al. So they just put me at safety, and that's just kind of how it was. Like, Al Davis would hire an offensive coordinator to be the head coach. Like, that was his thing because – he was a defensive coordinator. Right. And, like, he essentially was a head coach. So, I, like, Hugh Jackson was our head coach, but I always looked at him as the offensive coach. 
Wow. He wasn't my coach. He was the offensive co- offensive coordinator wow. primarily. Uh, you know, he still had those long practices. I feel like I feel like that was too long. But like players could go complain to Al. Like and if, get if you change. Jackson's uh, practices were too long, players would call Al Davis and say like these practices are too long. And the next day, practices are short. And <laughs> he, he he would have a team meeting. It's like we ain't doing that this year. You guys calling up the big the big guy and. <laughs> <laughs> like, nah, they was doing it. Right? <laughs> they was doing it. And they was working. Right? Right. It was, but that's just how it was, man. Yeah. That's crazy, man. Uh, I, I couldn't imagine being a coach and, you know, being in a situation like that. I know all coaches, you got to listen to somebody at the end of the day. But yeah. The, I can't the call my defense. Like that. Right. He yeah. controlled the defense. Like, Al Davis, like, man to man. So that's what we play. Right. So everybody, drafted, everybody always drafted real fast corners because mm-hmm. he like man to man. And our, our defensive coordinator really wanted to play cover two. Like, he wanted to mix in cover two. Al Davis hated cover two. So wow. we would never play cover two. So like it was like one practice. It was, I forget who was about to get ready to play, but they kept calling this defense that wasn't going to work against what the uh, the offense was doing, mm-hmm. and it wasn't working. Our practice and everybody was getting upset. The defensive defense coaches were getting upset, but the D coordinator was just chilling. Like, yeah, I just want I just want to get this on tape so uh, I'll I'll can see it so that we can mix in some cover two. <laughs> I'm like, man, this is crazy. So we just we just gonna throw the practice. <laughs> <laughs> That's wow. crazy, man. B, what, what was your your time like? I mean, not only with with with, with the Panthers, yeah. But when you so, go into your next destination, you know how was that? that and then b- around. bounce around, yeah, bounce around essentially. Yeah, bounce around. Yeah. So um, I was before we started, I, t- I did basically four season five camps. Mm. Uh, in oh, that time, if you did a fifth camp, it's five yeah. years. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just throw that out there, people. <laughs> In that time period, I think I was on six teams. I could shoot off real Rams for 10 days, Did went to the Panthers. I was there for my whole rookie year. They brought me back my second year. Uh, middle of that year, and getting released. Uh, Browns picked me up the next day on waivers. Finished my season with the Browns. That year, the Browns had basically just sold the team to Haslam. So, basically, they wiped out everything. No one job was to sign the free agents. So, I get uh, – no one signs me. Get that – Following week, the Giants pick me up. Go to there, do all season with the Giants, make it to final cuts, get cut, um, go home. Buffalo picks me up in the middle of that year. After that, do some workouts in between there. Steelers pick me up before the season then, finish my season with the Steelers. Go do the all season with the Steelers, get hurt with the Steelers in the uh, all season. Hurt my shoulder, injured reserve for the year. Come back, and I did uh, a couple weeks in camp with the with the Dolphins. Um that shit I, sound like a lot. It was a lot. It was a lot. I was should write a book when I got done. <laughs> <laughs> and this is what fans don't see, man. Yeah. yeah guys, guys like I mean, I, I did the same thing. I, I played for three teams in five years, man. It's that bounce around. Yeah, man, that bounce is, around. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. And you think you about to get an apartment. Like, yeah. Yeah, all right. You know, I'm gonna go stay in this hotel for a couple of weeks and right. you know test it out, yeah. make sure uh, yeah. we good. Cause uh, right, right, well, ten days. Yeah, all 10 right, days. <laughs> exactly. You learn about. I think, but really, though, I really was. I guess I kind of caught on quick to it because uh, I, in my head, I was like, you know, I really want to play football. That's what I want to do. Yeah. I'm gonna do everything I can to play football for this time of my life. Let's we'll see what happens. Right. You know, and my, like I said, I'm a confident guy. I go somewhere. I can learn the playbook. Once I went to two or three teams, I feel like, oh, well, everybody basically does the same thing, essentially. They just call it different stuff. Right. right. Yeah. Everybody's doing the exact same thing, figure out what they're calling it, <coughs> go in there, play, ball. Because a free agent, I feel like as a you know, as a draft guy, you kind of say, like, okay, this guy's really good at this. And everybody expects him to be good at this one thing. As a free agent, you got to prove that you're good at everything. Right. Mm-hmm. You got to be good at everything. Like, you can't just be bad at one thing and think that's okay. Like, well, no, he can't really pass back that will or, you know, wherever it is. You right. got to show that you're good at everything. Shit, you got to mop the floors if right. you're a free agent. Right. 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 You got to – you got to go. You got to do everything. Right. You got to. I ain't gonna say set your pride aside because you know everybody's professional. They right. Treat you as a professional, but you got to. You know what's on the block. Like mm-hmm. you know, they, they them gave <laughs> the the uh, draft pick a hundred grand, and I had to sign for free. Who they want around? <laughs> 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 and then paid this man hundred right. grand already. He right. gonna be around here. So yeah. if you want to be with him, you know you got to prove that you you you, show, you got some type of value around here. Because right. you know. He got the money already. We yeah. ain't about to just let him get, him get that money and walk out the door with it. Mm-hmm. You know, he's going to stay around. He's going to at least practice. Man. He's going to be <laughs> bad. He's going to practice. So uh, that's something I, I guess I kind of learned quick that, you know, 
Hey, I'm going to be here when I'm going to be here. Mm-hmm. When I go somewhere, I'm not signing no contracts, no apartments for me. Everything <laughs> was uh, extended Airbnb Man, or uh, – uh, Or sleep on somebody's couch. Yes. Uh, yeah, <laughs> right. Buddy system yeah. or, uh, you know, you find a hotel that kind of work out some rates. Like, well, if I stay here a month, can I just pay you this? Right. Yeah. And, you know, and you know, you can find that kind of stuff. Yeah. But, you know – for, you know me like I said I never really made a whole lot of money mm-hmm. I made the most money when I was on injured reserve right. playing football <laughs> and I'm just being honest when right. I was yeah. practice don't when you was on like practice squad uh, if I get activated at the end of the year you know you get a couple real game tests now I'm not really making a whole lot of money right. now, and I'm not complaining obviously practice squad is way <laughs> more than, right. than a regular person but in the terms of you know with the taxes that you get hit with right away on everything and with everything how it goes it's just you just don't have a whole lot of money you know you need to save it because you're already you know your yeah. career is already it could be over just like that right. so you just got to learn to be smart you know you don't you ain't splurging you might hang out with the guy that splurged you know yeah. <laughs> you go to the club you go out with the guy that bought a bottle you know what I'm saying I mean, right. I'm smart with him, man right? you know what I mean? smart yeah. and give him the game <laughs> B. give him the game <laughs> Three ninety nine, right, man? And, and you and you obviously it was a great time. I wouldn't change it for anything in the world. But like I say, real quick, you got to get real smart about it. If right. not, you know, you will find yourself paying for stuff that you shouldn't be paying for. You get cut. That that leasing, they you know, leasing office, they don't care about that. Exactly. Like, you, know, sure you, know. you owe you owe another. You know, owe nine more months of rent. Like you know, you figure it out. You know? That's the thing. And people get mad at guys like. Le'Veon Bell that that want to sit out and try to get as most money as he can, and people yeah. get mad at the Antonio Browns for now essentially wanting uh, the ball to be yeah. in his court and him yeah. to have control over his career mm-hmm. and, and dictate what he does. And you know they don't understand. They don't understand uh, what goes into it, and then yeah. they don't understand what it's like for a guy that's bouncing around from place to place. And I finally get good enough to to be able to sign this contract. Right. I hold out for as much as I can. Shit, yeah. right. mm-hmm. that yeah. only makes sense. Yeah. Did you get a chance to play with Jamarcus Russell? I did not. I okay. just got I got the stories when I got there. Gotcha. Gotcha. I got the they said uh Jamarcus Russell used to have a whole bunch of chains on and uh, he always had a cup of uh a lean. Of lean. <laughs> <laughs> he get into you coming to the locker, start taking off his chains one by one about about six, seven, eight chains. <laughs> Sipping his lean, so he gained a whole bunch of weight. He said it was crazy for real. This dude drinking lean in the locker room. Like, that's crazy. That's crazy. Lean and playing football, bro. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's nuts. That's, that's wild, man. That's, that's uh, nuts. But when you guys look at your careers, um, Chim, you, you bounced around to what? Maybe three teams? Yeah, I played. I went to Oakland. I went to the Patriots for a brief, brief, very brief stint. Mm-hmm. Back to Oakland, and I went was, to. Was it more Miami. than 10 days? <laughs> it was more than 10 days. I don't got you beat. It was more than 10 days. <laughs> But uh, yeah, that that was crazy when you talk about getting a, a an apartment or or a hotel. Yeah, see, I hadn't learned my le- I didn't learn that lesson. <laughs> Y'all learned it early. <laughs> I went to I went to uh, New England, and you know what I'm saying I was supposed to be like one of the guys they wanted to bring in all right. that stuff. I got recruited recruited to come to New England, so I signed. I tell you, the day I signed um, a contract with the um, the leasing office for my space for the year, the next day I got cut. Oh. <laughs> How are you getting out of the that? The next day I got released. I couldn't get out. <laughs> so I literally to... couldn't get out. Like, they wanted me to, first of all, they wanted me to pay for the year, bro. For I the year. Uh. I told them, I'm not paying y'all for the year. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Stuff hit my credit. That don't hit my credit Dude, and everything. This eviction notice right now. So I, ended up, <laughs> I ended up having to pay, like, I don't know. It, may, it might have been, like, five months or, or, or oh four months. God. It's expensive out there. Right, exactly. Right. Like, that's always expensive, Coast, man. Yeah. I'm like, man, this is crazy. Like, I signed this thing yesterday. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's the craziest thing, man. And and I had to move. So I moved from Oakland all the way to New England. I got my car shipped out there. Oh, I just got man. my car out there. Uh, I shipped my wife's car. Oh. You know what I'm saying? See, I just that's signed the lease. Yeah. And then the crazy, serious, when I got released by uh, New England, guess what I signed with? Oakland. So oh, I so you had to put all back. <laughs> <laughs> and they ain't paying no moving expenses. Oh, they don't no. just paying nothing. Not paying anything. Nothing yeah. at all. It's a cold world, man. Yeah. Yeah. Cold yeah. world, no blanket. Right. Right. <laughs> when, when you look back on your career, uh, you know, is there anything that you would would do different, or is there thing that you would tell your younger self more so than do different? Like right now, looking back, what would you tell your younger self playing in the league? Uh, th- so one thing, very, very, very specific, was work on flexibility more. I, <laughs> I was, I was, my, uh, I was messed up by the time I got to the league. But um, the second thing is, it, it, it's a tough thing to juggle uh, playing NFL because you realize my 
the most money I'll ever make, the best opportunity is playing football right, right. here, right now. It's right in front of me. Mm -hmm. So I got to put every all my effort into it. But at the same time, you don't know when it's going to end. So you yeah. need to kind of build everything that's important to you. You're gonna, you got to make sure you're, you're solid with your family. You got to make sure um, you're, you're, you're prepared for life after football when it comes to saving financially, but also trying to figure out what you're interested in and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think for me, I would go in with a better plan of how I'm going to balance that stuff. Yeah, so I'm right. still going to focus on football, but I'm going to set, set aside time to make sure I'm building up the, the, the plan for after football when it comes to maybe doing a business or just uh, getting more education or learning about entrepreneurship and stuff like that. And then all those other things that are important to me, I'm going to make sure I build that so that really I think that makes you a better football player because yeah. now you're confident in everything that you're doing. Right, you're well-rounded. So you're not, you're not afraid to right. mess up. Like you're not afraid to fail at football because <laughs> yeah. when I'm done, I'm ready for this. I'm, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So that's, that, I think that's the biggest thing for me. What about you, B? What would you tell your younger self? That's, that's good, too. I'm going to yeah. hit on that transition I, I, next, too. I, I, I really like that with Chimps is just, like, kind of planning on figuring out what was next. So so for myself, like I said, I wasn't – I was never taught as the best athlete. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm – you know, I was snuck on into Ohio State. Thank God I had a pretty good career once yeah. I was here. <laughs> yeah. Snuck on into the NFL, you know. I went draft a free agent, and, and, you know. And I, what Man, I should just happened, tell, though. what I should just tell yeah, myself is just, just kind of <laughs> 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 I was, I was, fat, man. <laughs> you know how you get done playing, you just kind of give yourself a realistic, like you know, at the time you really confident. I block anybody, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, I can handle that dude. Yeah. I started thinking about my career, like, man. What, now, you know, what, what, what was this so much, you know, make it got so much better to me that. You know what it was? I wasn't quick. <laughs> I was not quick. Like, like I think going straight, I could kind of get to a decent speed for my size. But like in a box, like I wouldn't. I wasn't quick. Like I had to know what was what was about to happen. <laughs> if not, if the D lineman started there and at the snap he popped over there, it might have been a problem. For me, you know what I mean? so like, if I can't see that there's something coming that he might be pinching, you know, I'm, I'm gonna be trying to figure it out later on. Type right. of deal. So, but back to the the question though, it's like just kind of <laughs> working on, uh, kind of you know what's next for yourself is just kind of, kind of figuring out you know what 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 do you want to do you know what are you good at type of deal. I would definitely say I put some more time there because I just went at the time I was everything for me was football. Like I said I really wanted to play at this time. Mm -hmm. Like this is my time to play. Everything I'm kind of really doing is about football. I uh, had my girlfriend now, my wife, make sure that relationship was cool. She wasn't with me. Like, that's another way I really kind of saved money. When she graduated, we both went to Ohio State. You go get a job because this might be over me. <laughs> right, right, right. Right. You don't, you don't, you, you ain't just tell me on this ten right, day. And I ain't right, got no job. Right. You, you, you know, you go get a job. You yeah. further your career, and I'm gonna do the football thing. And then when we have time, you come down right. off season. I come to Cleveland. Point. We work out, you know, and you know, we kept that relationship, you know, pretty strong and healthy. Uh, but at the time of myself, I'm just saying, you never know when it's going to go over. Go hard. Mm -hmm. And practice. Yeah. Go hard. Enjoy it. This might be your last snap. Enjoy it. Play hard. Go hard. It's time to work out. Do it to the best of your ability. <laughs> be the best player you could be. And then just kind of, you know, take it from there. And I, I and I guess that's what I kind of always think back and tell myself at the time. That's really, you know, where my focus was at. Right. Just, just put my best foot forward. But I, I would say now, maybe I should have spent some more time maybe, you know, kind of figuring out what I kind of want to do next, you know, type of deal. I know we all say that, but it's so hard. It's hard. Oh, oh it's hard. It's so hard. Is it hard or do we just, are, are we just saying just fuck it, essentially? No, honestly, if you're all in, man, like, like he just said, he signed a 10-day and it was over. But think about this, Boom. You made it to the NFL from Warren, Ohio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can damn near do anything that you want to do, <laughs> essentially. You know what I mean? So is it really that hard, or is our, our I, minds conditioned I, a certain I, way I to say I think our mind is kind of conditioned a certain way, and at the same time, is those the opportunities are not just so available as as you would like them to be, okay? So if I, I, I was, as you know, I was a really good student, really right. smart, you know, had really good grades, in college, you know, in the offseason, I never did an internship. I figured, like, if I just did one internship at doing something, mm -hmm. I could have bolstered off my career once I kind of finished the ball. But I never did that. Kind of summers, I'm, you know, I'm really focused on this team. I'm working out hard. I'm going to grab me a couple hours to, you know, 
to sleep at night, and you know, at the same time, I'm still a kid. So on the weekends, I still kind of want to go hang out with my guys, right? And got a girlfriend, still want to hang out with her sometimes. So I put my focus here, and the other stuff is like, you know, everybody, you you, yeah, you kind of put it on the back Damn. end. Everybody tells you have a plan after football. Yeah. Have a plan at the football, and your head just like I understand that. I, I hear it enough to understand it, but what is that plan? Like, yeah, is it? Right. How do I know what I want to do? How, how do How do I know that I want to? How do like, you know? Now, now we on a barbecue restaurant. How when I was playing, I didn't. I just like to eat. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's, it's just a different is thing. Yeah. Yeah. You, see. you know, we on a barbecue <laughs> restaurant now. Me telling a couple of group and a uh, couple of our really good friends, and at the time, it's just like. They tell you to you know plan for that future, but at the same time, the people that's in business say you need to have your hands on your business. You mm-hmm. can't, you can't. My hand is on my business. Yeah, right. you know, training, right. right? My business right now is training. Right. I can't just. In, that's they why say, it's so hard. In good exactly. faith, they say you know you just can't say I'm gonna just put it in on this wherever this investment is and just hopefully it just kind of just flourishes for me. Mm-hmm. You, gotta, you gotta be in there. You gotta <laughs> yeah. be in there. So if you in Ohio, your you your base in Ohio, you playing in the town. Say I'm playing in Charlotte. For the Panthers or something like that, it don't make sense for me to just take the the money I got and just give it to someone else and say do well with it. Right? It, yeah. it, just, it just don't it just it just don't make that much sense. And that, that's why it's so hard because your biggest benefit is right in front of you. Like, and what, if you don't take care. Whatever of that, else you're yeah. doing is taking is taking time away from what you're gonna make the most money doing this right now. That's right in front of me. Like I I know if I do good at practice tomorrow. That's gonna put me in position to play. It's gonna put me in position to go get some real money. You know what I'm saying? But I think I think what everybody can do is connect with other people. I think that's where we 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 make the mistake. Yeah. Like even at Ohio State, mm-hmm. like at Ohio State, we are so famous in Columbus, Ohio. So we connect with all the top entrepreneurs and business people in or in Columbus while we're popping. Like why everybody cares about us. Then when we get done playing. Go hit up one of those people that you already connected with, and yeah. that's I ain't learned that until real, real late in my my NFL career. I got I had a situation where I got hurt, got released. I'm like, dang, I don't know if I'm gonna play again. Then got signed again. I'm like, you know what? Let me let me connect with some people before I, <laughs> if I get to be. and I um I hit up this uh this CEO of a market research firm called Aimpoint or whatever. So when I got done, I hit him up. He was like, yeah, I'll give you I'll give you a job. And mm-hmm. See if you like doing market research or whatever. And I'm now I'm getting into food trends and all that stuff, and it. it it works with my my restaurant business and stuff. So I think it's hard to pull away time from what you're doing. But I think if you if we just use our our popularity to just connect yeah. with people, right. I think that's probably the biggest thing we could do while we're playing. Because mm-hmm. uh, really, to be honest, I mean they still care about you afterwards, but they don't care the same. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Yeah. They, like okay. even Ohio State fans, like they show me love, but it ain't the same when I'm on the field. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because there's a new guy out there uh, that. That that's balling right now. Right, you know what right. I'm saying? I was watching this Magic Johnson uh, documentary, and I was listening mm-hmm. to him talk. And what he said was so brilliant, and I wish I would have did it when I was playing. Um, and every city he played in, while he's that's, Magic yeah. Johnson, the Magic Man, and he met with every top business individual in that city. Mm. While he was playing, because you know, yeah. shit, I'm Magic. I'm playing for the Lakers. You're gonna pick up the phone, <laughs> right? Yeah. Just like if you, I'm Chim. I'm playing for the Oakland Raiders. They're going to pick up the phone. And I, and if they don't, I'll say, well, I'm going to give you a couple tickets. Exactly. They're definitely going to pick up the phone. <laughs> so I thought that was brilliant by him. Yeah. And I think more younger guys need to really realize that, like you said, while you're still in it, while you're still yeah. hot, yeah. take advantage of those opportunities yeah. because – Once that I, flame go down. Right. Once it go down, man, <laughs> it, it, it's it's tough. And I remember – I'm going to go back to Boom real quick. Boom said some shit one day. I wasn't there, but Boog told me. Everybody know Boog Lawrence. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. they out one day, yeah. and, and, and Boom, <laughs> it was just having to be some lady or some shit. And, and, and oh, they, 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 man. They had to want to bring this up, man. And <laughs> Boom told the girl, he was talking to her, and something ended up happening. You could probably explain a little bit better than me, but along the lines, Boom told the girl, walked up, <laughs> you just missed out on your blessing. You better check my network. <laughs> He said network. Check my net, not network. Check my network. My network. Oh man, hey, you was mad, bro. Hey. You, you was mad. But that's one of those situations when you plan, you thinking like, oh shit, I'm the man on top right. of the world. Yeah. Right. I can say this to that, the third. And I could, but man, you should have really checked your own network, yeah. right? Mm, and and right, really right. establish those relationships yeah. to be able to prepare yourself further. Obviously, you're doing great right now. So right. I'm just talking about for the average. Right. Oh no, 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 no. Right. Yeah. I agree with you. Right. I mean, I, I totally agree with you. I mean. 
But like that he shit was, was crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Hey, man, that was a young boy, man. Y'all know I was all crazy, <laughs> man. You know what I'm saying? I come from Warren, Ohio. Yeah, man, you put me in Columbus. Like, I'm seeing all this, man. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Nose wide open. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. No, but yeah. how hard, um, obviously, we're talking about transition right now. How hard has the transition been? Obviously, you talk about, you know, you was able to reach out to somebody, get a job when you got done playing and go yeah. into market research. And, and B, how hard was it for you to say, all right, it's done. Now let me pit, pin the pad, foot to pavement, and figure out what the fuck is next and yeah. what I'm going to do, not only, you know, to get a paycheck and pay these bills, but mm-hmm. you guys are married to yeah. take care of my family. Right. right. And y'all got kids. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard. I think for me, I think I benefit from the fact that I really don't be, I don't care what people think about me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so when I got done playing football and I became a civilian, <laughs> yeah. Then I'm gonna do civilian that's, that's things, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, if I gotta real. go get this job, I'm gonna go get this job. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't got no uh, status. Um, I don't care for mm-hmm. real. So I think that's big. I think uh, I think what a lot of guys struggle is because at some point you were really like big. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Even if you was just in college and say you never made it to the league, and you just was a great college football player, right? Well, you were on. ESPN, you were on everybody's television and stuff. Yeah, right, your family panel. And then when you get back, done yeah. with that, you feel like, you know, I should start. Whatever I'm doing, I should start up here too. Like, it's, it's hard to uh, humble yourself to a point where it's like, man, I got to start from the bottom right. and grind. Yeah. But um, I just don't mind grinding. So I think yeah. for me, um, that's that's probably the toughest part. The other thing is my whole network was in football. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But now I'm not playing football no more. So it's mm-hmm. like, dang, this, that network that I had – Ain't really that important no more. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> exactly. calling up, sending Hugh Jackson a text message. But I'm not trying to play corner no more. Send him a text message. He can't. He can't give me a job right, right now. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's the biggest struggle is you 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 connect with a lot of people in football and stuff. But once you get done with football, it's like I have no connections. Right. Like if I just went to school and majored in something and graduated and did an internship and stuff, I have a network of people just naturally I have a network. Right. When you get done playing football, you're like I have no. Network. Exactly. So it's like, who do I talk to? Yeah. I don't know who to talk to. That's right. I think that's the, probably the hardest part. Yeah, that, yeah, and that's I guess the biggest thing for me as well is just like like you say, it's just that transition. Like it just happens. So for me, I know a lot of guys get hung up in football. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. oh, we see it all the time. Oh, no. You know, you see it all the time. Guys who finish college, finish playing in the pros, and like they just they didn't they don't quite get. They think if I work harder. <laughs> <laughs> and they really, th- you know, they, you know, even though we know it all the time, all the time. No. right? That they say, for him. if I work harder, I get back. <laughs> for myself, I knew it was over. Yeah. When I hurt my shoulder with Pittsburgh, I just remember <laughs> thinking like, right when I hurt, I was in my head thinking like, damn, was that my last play? Because you know, I'm trying to fight to make the team. Right. So if you hurt, you definitely not gonna make the team. I'm thinking like, that's my last play, probably. Fortunately enough, I was able to get back, and I was able to get you know play a couple more snaps. And I, I my last um, game with the Dolphins, just a preseason game with the Dolphins, I was able to walk off the field. And then when I got cut, I was like, "Cool, I'm done with football. Mm-hmm. I know, like I'm done. Like my shoulder messed up. I'm not the same player I used to be. <laughs> it's over. Right. Go on with life. And, and and that's exactly how I took it from right right then on right then. And you know. Bouncing around, like you say, network for on, on the professional side of things, you know, really wasn't the same. So I'm reaching out to guys, you know, you know, me not knowing exactly what I kind of want to do. I'm reaching out to guys. Let's meet, you know, let's talk. Let's see what you do, right. or you know, you guys got an opportunity there, right? And then that's from there. I just kind of took that, bounced around. I actually met a guy. Uh, who just kind of helped me, you know, get a day job. Basically, that's right. what I kind of call it now, because you know, obviously the business this is the real focus right here, growing right. this business here. But I was able to get me a day job out of it, and the day job is not, you know, it's it's work. And like Jim said, you start at the bottom. Mm-hmm. I come in, you start at the bottom. You're doing the grunt work. You're learning because this is a whole new business. This is something that, um, something that you know you're just not accustomed to. Right. And I, uh, the funniest thing for me is that the the guy who was a uh, the hiring agent at the time who interviewed me, he said he looked at my resume, and so he on the in- in resume he see NFL. He's just like. I can't stand for National Football League. Like, you know? <laughs> like, that just means something else. I just don't know what it is, but I, I'm going to interview the guy. And then I come in, and I'm like, no, you know, yeah, actually, that, that, that's me. Like, right. you're like, oh, well, great. You're a cool guy. we hire you. You'll fit here. And now, you know, I'm working. I'm moving up, you know, mm-hmm. going up the ranks. And 
And now you just got to put your foot to the to the to the metal, man, so, to so the pedal. There was no kind of like pride thing that got in the way. Was saying, you know what, I'm gonna get this job and I'm gonna start up from nope. the bottom. Not for me, because for me, the way I took it was, this is a, this is a new opportunity. Mm -hmm. This what Sorry. I used to do in football to this is it's it's, it's not the same. Right, right. So when I started football, you're not gonna come in and say I'm gonna start a quarterback. Hey, watch out the way. Like, <laughs> right. you gotta learn the fundamentals. You gotta learn what you're doing. You gotta start from the bottom, and you gotta put the work in. You gotta show people that hey. I used to have this work ethic here, and I transitioned. Look, this this is me. My mm -hmm. work ethic is me. Now I'm putting it over here, and that's you know. And from there, my colleagues that I work with on a daily basis, they all respect me. They know like this guy used to be at the play college football for Ohio State in Columbus. Mm -hmm. Now he went on and played in the NFL. He, he's now a business owner, and he works for uh, you know work for my company. And every day I come in, great attitude. I'm learning. I'm, I'm pleasant. Right. I'm doing the right thing. <laughs> you know, I'm doing stuff right. I'm not just you know just trying to walk you're, in and collect you're, a you're check. The dumb you know? job. Yeah, no, you're not the dumb job. Right, right, I'm coming in and putting work. Crazy, I, I got prepared, you know what I'm saying? I, like I said, I, I got hurt or whatever, got released. That kind of woke me up a little bit. But I, I went back to school while I was still playing. I got an MBA while I was playing. I know that. And so I was in Miami, and while I was in Miami, I went to University of Miami, got my MBA. So I thought I was That's ready, up. you know what I'm saying? Like right. I'm just like, I, I got it. I graduated um, Ohio State in the county. I got my MBA, you know what I'm saying? So I got done playing, and I'm like, okay, I'm about to go get a job. Right. I'm create a resume. Good job. <laughs> right, yeah. right. All my resume says is, first of all, McDonald's. <laughs> 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 NFL, NFL, All American, uh, NFL, 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 and NBA. Right. And no, I'm like, I don't got. Everybody says that you don't got no, no experience. experience. I'm yeah. like, I, no I got an NBA, bro. <laughs> what you mean? Like, bro, I was playing football, and while I was playing football, I was getting my NBA. That's, that's, experience. You know work. Yeah. <laughs> that's experience. You yeah. ever play football and try to get NBA? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, it ain't easy. <laughs> but I ain't, had, I ain't had no network. Right. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So outside of uh, uh, Brett, who's the CEO of Aimpoint Point Research, I, that was my, that's all I had in terms of network. Um, and I'm, it, it worked out that I was interested in that. Right. And, you know, he was a good guy also. And we connected and it worked out with this thing about a, a, a football player, all he do is play football. You don't got no network outside of football, yeah. for real. That's, that's the tough part. So yeah. if, you, if you don't learn nothing from this, I mean, young guys that are watching, it's just people in general that are watching this, it's important to build and establish that network of individuals yeah. that's going to help you don't be better and help you transition mm -hmm. in, in right. life. I mean, that shit is critical, man. A lot yeah. of times people don't, like you said, like we talk about, we, we see it on a regular basis. Guys do not know how to adapt outside of mm -hmm. what they're doing and what they've been accustomed to for so many years and how critical it is. Um, I'm gonna shift gears real quick, man. Yeah. I, I think we all know what's going on with Antonio Brown, yeah, and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm gonna get to his comments in a second, but I'm gonna get to the comments of the GM Kevin Colbert. Okay, yeah. Kevin Colbert essentially said that Big Ben was the dad mm -hmm. of the football team, <laughs> not using the word dad, yeah, but everybody else was kids on the football team. If you're on that team, man, how does that make you feel when the GM come out say and come out and say? That the quarterback, Big Ben, he has the right to be able to throw whoever under the bus and call whoever out because he's essentially Papa and everybody else's kids on that football team. Mm -hmm. Does that make you feel like, damn, do they really respect me? It's, that's not football. See, that, uh, football is a team sport, right. right? And I think, you know, I guess especially from – basically, let's say where we went to high school at, especially, you know, where I went to high school at, where it's literally, you know, all, all black kids mm – -hmm. You come to Ohio State, and now you know you got uh, you know different races and things like that. A bunch of people from different backgrounds. The first thing you do, you you break all that down like that. This is not that no more. Mm -hmm. This is a team. Right. When you come out and make a comment like that, you say this guy is above your team. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody else kind of need to kind of almost fall in line. Right. And like I say, that's. I don't know. He gonna have to do some good PR to kind of get that Big team time, back man. because you, 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 you say something like that to another another grown man. You know, quarterback is an important position. We right. all would probably say arguably is the most important position in football. Center. But uh, 
you know, everybody play different positions. You know, <laughs> this is a whole new different thing. Like you know, kind of like with basketball. Hey, you know, you know, if, if I score fourteen, then you only score two. Like I score fourteen, you score two. Like you <laughs> right. know, what I, in, in football, you know, it's totally different. Right. You know, everybody got different stats. Everybody are you know different professions. You got pro bowlers on on the offensive line. I think three or four pro bowlers on the offensive line. You got a pro bowl wide receiver. You got you know guys on the defensive line, pro ball defensive lineman, Cam Hayward, and you're just gonna say this man is almost above you guys, and just because I think he tried to back it up, say because he was the only one to win a Super Bowl. I mean, he played, he won a Super Bowl with a team, like he didn't just win that by himself. So when you come out and say something like that, like I say, you know, the Steelers is a good organization. Everybody know they, you know, they won a lot of games, won a lot of Super Bowls. They contenders every year. They're gonna have some work to do to win that, then we get that locker room back because because I. The stuff that came out this year, that locker room was it seemed like it's a tad bit of in a uh, tad bit of a mess almost. Right? Yeah, I don't know what's going on there, but I mean the owner's not in the locker room. So at the end of the day, it's almost like I'm not really playing for the owner anyway, to be honest. Now, um I don't know what type of relationship he had with specific players. Um but as, but it really comes down to Ben Roethlisberger, though. Like he gotta speak up now. Like if 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 over time he always if he was acting like he was above the team, right? And then the owner Which comes. What it sounds like. Then the owner comes out and says, um, "He is above the team." Right, GM, GM. GM. Oh, uh-huh. GM says says he is above the team. Then, then you start to connect those two. You you start to feel like it's us versus them. Mm-hmm. Right? But that's what he's basically said, though. But yeah. that's the crazy part. If Ben Roethlisberger always, if it, it always felt like he was a part of us, mm-hmm. and he comes out and says that, and then Ben Roethlisberger says, "Nah, that's not how it is. Right. Man, I'm with y'all." Then, I mean, at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? That's you different. Give, you got to give That's him the different. benefit of the doubt. Yeah. But if you already had suspicions or felt a certain way, mm. and then he says that, then it's like, hey, we ain't messing with you. And if yeah. you can't, if you're not with the quarterback, then it's going to be a whole fracture locker yeah. room, man, because yeah. you got to respect that quarterback. You got to feel like he's he's in it, he's in it with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now I played with both of them. I was with the Steelers. I did, a, uh, like I said, I got picked up there. For a couple of one games. of the tours, yeah, one of the tours <laughs> did an off season there. You know, obviously, an off season is kind of when you spend the most time with guys and mm-hmm. kind of get to know them. And I did that until I got hurt, and then obviously, I still kind of was around on injury reserve, but I kind of was out of the building. Now, I never was a starter, never played any actual games for the Steelers. So, you know, I'm kind of, you know, I'm, I'm just a guy there, almost fly on the wall, I'm trying to learn and trying to fit in, right. trying to get in. Um, watching this the team and off the off the line, you know, everybody works directly with the quarterback. Mm-hmm. Um and seeing how A B handles himself with the team, how uh, a Ralph is breaking handles himself with the team, there is a difference. You know, at the time, A B is almost tied. I think this is before he kind of got that last contract, but A B is just told us like this guy just worked ridiculously hard. Like right. this is this is the yeah. the buzzes of you know the, the, this guy. So I'm glad is, we got you here, man. Cause you this see guy, it. Yeah. This guy's amazing. Like he he right. he works hard, really really hard. Like every day he's. He's in. He's doing this and this and that. He's doing all this extra stuff. He's trying to get better. He's trying to get better. And at the time, you know, fly on the wall, you got Ben, you know, who's an older guy, mm-hmm. you know. So, you know, some stuff is mandatory. Some stuff is not. You know, Ben was a – now, he was a big voice. Now, now when Ben says something, you know, guys kind of told up and listen. But if you got a guy who's getting told it as this hard worker compared to a guy who's, you know, who's your quarterback – but this guy's here, you know, and everybody knows him for this repetition. Like, you know, he's not this guy. This guy, AB, is not the problem. Right. You know, this guy, he's he's a he, you know, he's an access to us here. He's right. an access. He he's helping out. You know, when I and like when you start hearing that stuff in the locker room, you start you just start just trying to think like, you know, what's what's really going on there because there's obviously has to be a divide going on. And you got to choose a side. Like right. guys naturally just choose a side. Like right. yeah. either I'm gonna be with AB or I'm gonna be with Roethlisberger. Right. And, mm-hmm. If you never with Roethlisberger, like you never felt like you was like a real like not necessarily a friend, but you just felt like he was one of the guys. You never felt like that, then automatically you just gonna default to being with the other guy. Right, and, like right. that's gonna fracture because they're gonna ship AB out of there. Right, yeah. and if you felt like I was with him, and they you kept them and got rid of him, it's like not, man, I'm not, not really my, messing. Right, with I'm not really yeah. messing with it. And then the same thing. Then this this year though, then they had the same thing uh, with Le'Veon Bell. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is then you know before the season you got guys coming out to the media oh, like almost like out, man. that yeah. that that tripped me out because you was see all bad, some, some guys yeah. coming out that you know supposed to be <clears throat> well, he ain't here right now forget him right yeah. we, we going on without him he complaining about the he money complaining I about this. This, this, this third and forget him That's and now as a player you know I mean you know as a player like we sit here at this table and we all would probably say with those same guys that they were sitting here man you got to get your money while you can right yeah but for whatever reason at the time they just felt different 
and it was kind of just why. it was it just kind of it was kind of hard to hear. Mm-hmm. Like, man, we supposed to be together on this. Something is going on. There's a disconnect. You know, usually there's always a disconnect with the manager, with the owners, and the people that you know hands out the contracts because they're business too. They're right. trying to get mm-hmm. the best buck for things, and that divide is a natural divide is going to be there. Yeah, but for. For those guys to start to publicly go out and say stuff, you're just like, man, yeah. this is about to be a wild year over there. If it ain't one thing players going to come together on, it's the fact that we all want to see guys that are grinding, guys that are working their tails off, guys on the team, we all want to see everybody get paid. Yeah. Everybody get paid. And, and, yeah. and, you know, to see, hear those guys come out, it was like, damn, what's going on? But That's another thing is, yeah. is with AB said, I don't know if you guys watched the shop, um, but AB came out and, and, and said that, like you said, B, everybody knows his reputation. Everybody knows he's a hard worker. Everybody knows he's a great teammate. But now you have this shift in the media, and they're controlling the narrative. Mm-hmm. And what I want to ask both of you guys, man, how much does that kind of piss you off or leave a nasty taste in your mouth when you see guys that you know are upstanding, good character individuals, but now the media gets a hold of it and kind of twist and turn? And yeah. you guys got any examples of people that you've seen that way? I mean, I got twist an example. Twist and turn their narrative. I got an example with A.B. So, like I say, I'm flying the wall trying to make the team with the Steelers. Trying to do the best I can, you know, doing all the right things, you know, just trying to make the team. You know right. how you how you go through that process. Um, Chip was there. We went skiing. Uh, I think it's Seven Hills. Uh, and I think it's, it's I think it's in Pennsylvania. Yep. We skiing. I'm flying the wall. I'm there for essentially a, a couple games in the off season. Right. All right. I'm cut. I'm gone. You know, they go on. They had. I think that year they made the playoffs that year. You know, who thinking about, you know, the free agent who hurt his shoulder who gone essentially for the whole year. We go skiing. A.B. shows up to the resort. Mm-hmm. So, obviously, Antonio Brown on the resort, you know, there's all these people there. You know, he's kind of like, you know, almost like a super, literally a superstar just walked in the door. Right, right. absolutely. He's there with his family. Um, I'm not going to say they're keeping people away, but people are trying to be respectful, you know, of him being with his family. I believe he had, like, a, uh, one of his uh, children with him, uh, maybe girlfriend, wife, I don't know, something like that with him at the time. And um, I see him. I'm like, man, that's A.B. He see me. Like, big bro, what's up, man? Uh-huh. And go over, he dab me up like we've been friends for, you know, up 10 years. And that's just kind of shows, like, you know, the character of that guy. Right. Like, you know, like I say, I'm, I'm nothing to the stand I'm just a guy. With ben, big Ben. Big huh? Ben do the same thing. Would, give you, would you uh-huh. greet you the same uh-huh. way? Uh-huh. I don't know being like that. I can't oh, say it. Man. Yeah, man. I was like, you know, A.B. know A.B. I know yeah. that what A.B. did in the situation. Right. That's what I can speak to. That what A.B. did in the situation. And then you could always respect – you know, you always respect a guy like that. Right. Cause you know, this guy, you know, he's seen your hustle. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He he know like who who the cause you know still they they I think this year they may have had three or four guys go to the Pro Bowls. Just mm-hmm. saying guys was there when I was there. These are the guys. Right. I'm just a, I'm just a guy in the room. Right. Like, you know, I'm just, I'm just a guy around here, a you know, body. Trying, right. Yeah. A cat body type guy, you know. <laughs> And for him to still just to see you, you know, and give you that kind of love and respect, because at the same time, it would have been easy for him just to forget who the hell I was, like right. you know what I mean. Like, <laughs> I probably don't know my name, but he could know my face. Like, man, I remember you, that big brother. <laughs> you know what I mean, that made you feel special, right? I ain't gonna say it made me feel special, but it just showed you what type of dude he was, man. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, the situation, man. What about you, Chip? You got any situations that you can kind of hit on like that? Where oh, I know, I know. This past year, uh, Derek Carr is in the news a lot, and I, I think I was watching first take. I think it was like Stephen A. and Max, and they were just talking about how Derek Carr doesn't have the heart or something <laughs> right. like that. Like yeah. it's one thing to talk about like he's not playing good right. and stuff like that, but they're like, yeah, I feel like the guys around him are losing faith in him. He was crying during the game. Like it was a whole bunch of like stuff that was reported by sources or whatever, but um, they feel like he didn't have the heart, and guys probably question his heart and stuff like that. And I'm listening to it like this is the craziest thing I ever heard. <laughs> but I played with DC, and it's just like. DC is the opposite of what we were talking about. Like, he's part of the guys. Like, right. he makes it a point. And I don't know if it's because, it, you know, his, his other his other older brother, David Carr, was was uh, a top draft pick for the Texans years before. But I don't know if it's, it's because he's used to being around it or what, but he knows how to connect with everybody. Right. So he makes it a point to connect. And um, I just know him personally. And I'm like, man, this is some crazy <laughs> stuff. And it was funny because he – he tweeted at him like he like these clowns don't know nothing, right. so they kind of argue back and forth on Twitter. But I'm just like, uh, uh, it's it's crazy how the media could because they have to have a story, right? Right? Yeah, they got to talk. need to talk about something, and they, <laughs> they don't got to talk. They don't know. So <laughs> twisting it so they, much, so you're right. changing yeah, somebody's oh, perception. Man. They need yeah. a headline, like they need the YouTube video to pop up and say, Derek Carr doesn't have heart." Like they need that headline so people click. They right. need clickbait. So to do that, 
they 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 come up with stuff, man. It's it, it's funny because sometimes when you even playing, like when you're just watching ESPN, because I don't know why the team was always on ESPN when we was eating, but <laughs> you watch ESPN, you see something about your team right. and what's happening in your locker room. You're like, man, this is some crazy. Yeah. Like this is not happening right now. Like you sitting next it's to the, the guy they talking about. I'm like, bro, like <laughs> I don't know. But that's right. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that, that, that's just crazy. I wanted to hit on that, man. Tom Brady is a guy that uh, I always hear all the time. Obviously, I never played with him, but I always hear from the, the the number one receiver to the last man on the roster. When they sign, he makes sure that he knows them and he got a relationship with them. And I always respect cats like that, man. Yeah. And I was with the Patriots, man. I was with them, like I said, for a short time. Tom Brady was really, really, really cool, dude. He has, like, this facility called TB12 or mm -hmm. whatever. Guys can go in there and get treatment and right. work out and stuff. Uh, yeah, he was really, really, really a good dude, right. man, for real. That's important, man. Um, we got anything else we want to hit on, man, before we get out of here? Man, we ain't talk about this food, oh, talk man. About food, man. Yeah, talk, man. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, gotta talk, talk about, about food. this food, yeah, man. We're gonna edit this and put this at the front of the video. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> man, explain uh, what we got right here in front of us, man. And you know what I'm saying? I already so, ate a little bit. Right, 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 what we have left. Right, um, first of all, I'm gonna go on record and say this is the best barbecue in Columbus. Oh, yeah, right. put that on the record. On the right record. Write it down. Hey, look in the camera. Best barbecue in Columbus. Number one. Yeah. Which camera am I looking at? I don't know where I'm looking, but best barbecue in Columbus for sure. Um, but we got right here. We got a Polish boy. A Polish boy. It's a. It's a. It's, it's something I want B to explain. Because yeah. It's a. It's a Cleveland. It's a, it's a Cleveland thing. Yeah. So when we kind of uh, came up with the restaurant, uh, three of the three to four owners are from Cleveland. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Chum uh, went to high school in Florida. Grew up in New Orleans. Um, and when we had the idea to start a restaurant, we took Chip to Cleveland. Right. We about to go to the spots we used to eat at when we was kids. This, right. this was this is the energy we want to try to bring to it. And um, what you usually had is is one sauce. They go on everything. One signature sauce for this location. Uh, you have things like you have the uh, the batter wings. You have Polish boys. You have turkey uh, turkey ribs that you have here. You have uh, good size, good handmade sauce. We had some macaroni and cheese. I think Tim ate the macaroni yeah, and I'm cheese. Yeah, I'm on the mac and cheese. Right? <laughs> we, got, we, got, we got candy yams, baked beans, collard greens. We got our uh, our pit slaws, our, our twist on the uh, coleslaw. We um kale. We make a base of that with kale. It's a kale slow. Yeah, and what the Polish boy brings that that was something that most people when they even after they eat it they call it a po boy. Like mm -hmm. you know, like you down south. Oh, right. y'all yeah, got those po boys. Uh, it's a Polish <laughs> boy. Man, y'all I, I know y'all got those po boys. It's, it's a Polish boy. But what we do there? That's uh, you take a a beef kibasi, you deep fry it. Mm. Uh, you put that in the bun. Uh, we got hand cut fries on ours. Put them down. You get we got our pit our pit slaw. We Dripped out over top, and then we put our uh, signature sauce over it. What? Where the recipes it's, it's, come from? So the recipes, they mostly all family recipes. Okay. So okay. it, it took right. us a while. We went around, like I say, it was a lot of eating in Cleveland. We did a lot of eating. <laughs> yeah, we, we went over. We yeah. see big fellas. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, I, you know, I get it in. But uh, yeah, uh, we went around and we met with family members because we know, you know, this is the food we wanted to kind of bring here. Right. And we we got together. We see what tastes best. Uh, what made sense as a restaurant to make. You know, obviously, you, you know, if you got a process to make something, it take. I don't know, two days to make. You know, obviously yeah. you can't bring that right. to a restaurant. But we we figured out what made sense. We sat down, we ate, we gained a lot of weight during that time. I ain't getting no weight. <laughs> Chimney gain. I gained a lot of weight during that time. Uh, and uh, we uh, came up with a, I feel like a really really solid uh, menu of yeah. basically every item on the list we could vouch for as being really good. It's not the biggest menu in the world. We vouch for everything that's on our menu, for sure. Beautiful thing, man. And you guys have the food truck. Obviously, this location here, we're in Northern Lights. Yeah. And we potentially got another location, right? And no potential. Yeah. It's real. Yeah, we tell, have, it's hey, real. Tell okay. them. Okay. <laughs> we, tell we, them. We'll open up a second location. It's called. It's going to be the Pit on Parsons. It's going to be on Parsons Avenue, south of uh, um, Nationwide Children's over okay. there, off of Freebus, around Freebus and Parsons. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be another another good pit location. We yeah. we like the area. We like the community out there. Uh, real up and coming area. Yeah. Um, so it's we're excited be about it, man. Yeah, it's gonna be big. Well, look, two, two restaurants, food truck. Check out the pit barbecue. I voucher for y'all. This food is legit. Yeah. Now, I'm like a little fat kid. <laughs> <laughs> and when I can't, hey, honestly, I tried to eat healthy. But they brought all this food out here, man. <laughs> yeah. I just had to nibble, nibble on We, we got the kale slaw now. We got the kale slaw. Kale slaw. We got yeah. the collard greens. Yeah. Collard greens are good, a good healthy right. vegetable. This is yeah. about the second, third order turkey ribs we had to bring <laughs> out, though, man. Them turkey ribs are flying off the rack. Now, them yeah. collard greens got some smoked turkey in there, too, now. Yeah. So we ain't just put the greens out there. We, we you know, we did yeah, it we, we did them right. You know gotcha. We did them right. So this, this is a wrap on Beating the Boom, the podcast, man. We thank Brian Browning. We thank Chimney Checkwall. We thank the Pit Barbecue. 
Tune in on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, all of that good stuff. Yeah. yeah. And tell a friend. <laughs> Tune in too. Give it five stars on five iTunes. Five stars.